Welcome to CalCast, your creator national podcast. Network News, Episode 96. Welcome, GNN fans, to another episode of God Network News, the podcast that tells you what God's doing around the world, not what CNN tells you, but what GNN tells you is going on in the world. If you're tired of listening to all of that crisis network news and you want to hear what God's doing, well, give us a listen. Welcome once again, God Network News fans, to another episode that is part of a new series that my wife and I were able to record and interview some incredible stories from the Middle East. We were able to meet with several workers uh, doing church planting work in the region and just ministering to people. And wow, what amazing things that God is doing amongst Arabs in the Middle East. It's incredible. And I want to bring this to you as a series so that the next 12 episodes will be testimonies from these uh, incredible workers that are doing amazing miracles through the power of God as they pray for people's needs and seeing people come to Christ. So without further ado, I want to launch right into the next episode in this wonderful set of stories. Greetings again, God Network News listeners. We have a wonderful episode for you at this time. We're still in the Middle East, and we're interviewing now Kate and her husband, Andrew. So this amazing couple uh, will be sharing with us about their story, how God brought them to the field and brought them together, and what he's taught them. And this interview will be done by my lovely and precious wife, Carol. So take it away, Carol. So it's been great being with you right in your home here. And we remember that we were teaching in your missionary training class. And at the time, you were single and you were going for it, whether you're married or not. You were just young singles with a passion and calling. And so tell us about that. Tell the encouragement to singles that you don't have to go to the mission field married. How, How can you go as a single person passionate and called? I think that is such an important question, and I think it it matters to most people that they have to really wrestle with that question if they are single coming to the field. And thank you for calling us both young. I am a little bit older than my (laughs) husband and, um, you know, more on the the later side of the millennial uh, generation. I'm not going to say my age exactly because I'm a lady. Um, (laughs) but yeah, I, I was later in years and thought if I leave America, I'm probably leaving behind any chance I have to get married. And that mattered to me. And that was a big part of my wrestle with God, a big part of my, my yes. And my commitment hinged on God. I also want to be married and I want to serve you and be obedient but I want to do it with a really gorgeous man. And is that so much to ask? (laughs) And um, God led me through a beautiful process of surrender. And I think we do have to surrender all of our um, fears, all of our um, entitlements, and also all of our wants and desires. And I think we have to trust him that he'll carry those things because it matters to him as well. and I, I did, I, I dreamed about moving to the Middle East for six or seven years. And then when I thought it was the Lord's timing, started to assemble a team of just some amazing other um, friends and uh, 
uh, people hungry to go to the field. And there was one other handsome man on the team that I thought was <laughs> nice and kind, and he was really hilarious. Um, but there was a big age gap, and I I just felt God saying no. And my, my yes to move to the Middle East had really nothing to do with a, another person. It had all to do with the Lord. Um, but there was there was an attractive person on the team. Um, yeah, that's helpful. Huh? <laughs> do you want to do you want to yeah. confirm that, Andrew? <laughs> yes, I am the attractive person on the team, um, <laughs> apparently. Um, but yeah, just to answer that question, for me, it honestly, um, never really was a concern for me being a male. I think just a um, piece of advice for Christian guys: um, most mission organizations have a lot more females than they do males. Um, so it really wasn't um, a huge thing I felt like I had to lay down. Uh, one, because the team I was joining had an amazing, attractive female already, um, yes. my now wife, Kate. Um, and yeah, just in general, I think all the statistics I've ever heard is there's a lot more females than males on the field. So I think really for this question, um, the major um, person that has to lay stuff down are the females um, for the most part in these these sort of situations on the mission field. Um, but with that said, I think, um, yeah, I was just so consumed with uh, the Great Commission, Matthew 28, and that was really just what was stirring in my heart at the time when I said yes. And uh, that was really the main force driving me forward is just being obedient to that command of going into all the world and making disciples and preaching the gospel and yeah, I think the Lord is so faithful to give grace and give you supernatural trust just in this whole area of marriage. So I just say if you're feeling the call to go on the mission field, whether you're single um, or not, I just say go. And the Lord, he's so, so faithful to fulfill the desires of your heart. So Yeah. And I think for me, what ended up happening was um, as honestly, the years started to go by of of living out in the Middle East, um, surrounded by few um, Westerners, um, I, it my husband did start to emerge as someone who was carrying this vision and calling as equally as me, and um, I, I started to feel like, wow, if he ever left this mission, this project, this team, this the vision would would collapse with him. And that started to be um, part of the opening of my heart towards him, not just of, oh, he's funny and wonderful and handsome and he's a great friend and he's a radical lover of Jesus, but it was, oh my gosh, he's carrying this with me. And um, so it was that realization along with the powerful kind words of my father who was like, you got to get a grip. <laughs> no, he didn't say that, but, but yeah, it was, it was family that had been praying for me because they were carrying this desire with me, but they, I think they knew long before I did that Andrew was my betrothed. Yes. Amen. That's a wonderful testimony. So what encouragement would you have for, um, young people? They're single, they know they have a calling and yet they're not sure if their husband or wife would have that to be would have that calling and what what challenge would you have for them not to compromise on the calling that god gave you as singles but how god can bring you together and with the same calling and same purpose hmm. um my answer to that question i would just say one if you're single and not already engaged or in a serious relationship um, and you're single and you know you have a call to the mission field i would just kind of plainly and intensely say, um, don't get in a relationship with someone who doesn't have that same calling. I think um, calling is just so primary. There's so much grace from the Lord if, you know, callings don't fully match up and there's grace and uh, just miracles God does to just align those callings and make it work. But I think you'll save yourself a lot of trouble um, if, yeah, you just really um, do your best to focus on the Lord, focus on what he's called you to be obedient to that call and just trust him to just bring along the right woman or man uh, on that journey rather than maybe vice versa of just seeking to get married because you're super desiring of that and then 
trying to figure out your calling afterwards. I, I think calling should come first and the Lord's faithful to, to bring people along in that. Well, yeah, for me, if I could give my honest answer, it's that I cried multiple nights a week, probably for the first two years, you know, living in the Middle East, not being married. And I just cried because I wanted it and I was disappointed and I was longing and I was hurting. And um, there were moments when as a single person, you just cry and you're crying and there's there's no resolution. But there were times when, yeah, that that ache in my heart and that desire was a deep place that I met a really deep depth of the comfort of God and um, where he really did speak to me about his his love for me and how he was caring for me and um, all my dear diary moments where I can look back and read of journals I wrote where I was totally loved and but it was it was in the place of a lot of tears mm -hmm. but I would say again as as much as as we want that to be married. And again, if you're single coming out to the field, let that just be a place where God can love you. Yeah. Amen. You know, I was just thinking about uh, what you were saying, Andrew, about uh, the calling being so important. I know for Carol and I, that was true. Uh, we both had been um, in mission work uh, for quite a few years and we were both going in a specific direction. We both had a very strong call and I really, we really, I think, look back at it oftentimes and see how it was really when we both each individually uh, pursued without any um, like deviation, you yeah. know, that call and that pathway that God gave us, that those paths started to come together and dovetail, you know, and uh, then God was able to bring us together, yeah. you know, the right people together. Right. And had we had one of us decided to compromise that call, we probably never would have come together. Mm -hmm. And I, it's just, you know, I'm so grateful that God gave us the grace to be able to do that. And that in his time, you know, he made those two paths that were parallel or whatever come together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with you guys. Yeah. And 